Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the April 16, 2019 Dayton City Council meeting. Donna, please roll call. Mayor Baker. Here. Member Volter. <coughs> Member Neary. Here. Member Basler. Here. Member Cornette. Here. Member Burns. Here. Member Lynn. Here. City Administrator Giffen. Here. City Attorney Ed. Here. Full house, fantastic. Now if you could all please rise for a brief prayer and pledge. Mother's Day plant sale to benefit the community garden. Um, community garden has been here, I don't know how many years I've been involved for about three years. Last year we had our first plant sale, which was approved by the council. Um, so this year what we're kind of looking to do is set up in Monument Park, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. May 11th. Um, we'll have one table benefiting the community garden and um, we've kind of generated some interest from a couple nonprofits, uh, Campbell Can County Public Library, Campbell County Extension, in the Northern Kentucky Beekeepers Association. So we're kind of looking to have some informative booths for families that are interested in gardening, kind of raise awareness for the garden. And then additionally, we have some interest from a couple of uh, other vendors, including Highland Garden Center. That's a possibility, a possibility another local beekeeper that could sell their honey. Um, I guess what I'm asking is for the council's approval and then also um, a $5 uh, a yard sale permit for the vendors to keep things less prohibitive. There's not really a guarantee that people are actually going to make a profit, so it would be nice to kind of keep things minimal and uh, develop some support for the community garden. What's the date you're asking for, Amanda? May 11th, the day before Mother's Day. Does this require a motion by council? I presume. We usually do a special yeah. application. I have it right here. But if you all want to, go ahead and approve it. Does it all. need our approval? Or does the mayor need our approval on it? It's city property at Six and Barrett. <coughs> no, but if you want to, well, we can approve it internally if you want, but you just want to make it a matter of record. A matter of record, I'll make the motion to allow the community garden to hold a plant sale at Six and Barrett on city property on May 11th and to make the vendor's fees $5 per vendor as it would be for any yard sale. We're really looking forward to it. What's the, what's the time, Amanda? Uh, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it won't require any additional facilities, just the green space. And then we were considering maybe talking to Bucks Barbecue about allowing the vendors to use their restroom. Yeah. Which we can do. Second. I do have a question for you. Sure. You're going to have a barbecue? No, no. Oh, we're, not, okay. we're not vending food. Um, okay. We just need to ask Bucks permission to use their restroom. Okay. But um, it's just purely garden related, little handmade garden crafts, that kind of thing. Just a little Mother's Day sale. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a motion and a second by Mr. Burns. Uh, I guess all in favor? Aye. Any nays? Fantastic. Great, thank you. I really appreciate it. Good luck with it. Thank you. Anybody else from the audience like to approach council? <coughs> Anyone? Okay, moving forward to the mayor's report, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, in the last uh, month or so, we have been working very hard on the stormwater runoff from. Uh, from the, the torrential down wars that we keep getting. Uh, with the stormwater task force has been working pretty closely with the mayor's office and also SD1. We want to give a major thanks out to SD1 for their help in that. Uh, we, we've already prevented a lot of backyard floodings and we need to continue to do more. Uh, it, it's just a start. So uh, 
uh, I want to thank uh, the, the, the Stormwater Task Force and SD1 for their help on that. And that's that's my mayor's report for this rainy April month. Now uh, we have an approval for minutes for the March 5th meeting. Does anyone have a chance to take a look at the minutes? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. I'll second. Motion made by Ms. Cornett and second by Mr. Neary. Do we have any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstain? Any days? Minutes approved. Now we all move on to the ordinances and orders. Uh, the first order will be 201933R to grant funds for the Riverfront Commons project. City of Dane, Kentucky, resolution number 2019-3R. A resolution by the City of Dayton, Kentucky to authorize the mayor to sign a grant agreement for the City of Dayton Regional Commons Project, item number 06-00453, federal project number 3002-332. Just real quick, someone asking a question on this right before the council meeting. We, we pointed to the wrong ordinance. This is regarding the sidewalk, the trail. Okay. So the motion has been read. Is, do we have a, uh, a motion? Move to approve order 2019-3R. Motion has been made to approve. We have a second. Second. Second by Member Lynn. Any comments? I would like to see, this is for the design phase of the project, correct? Yes, design for phase two. Okay. Uh, and this is the area pretty much from, pretty much from the McKinney Swale all the way out to near where the new apartments for the tapestry project is. Theoretically, yes. Okay. Um, when are these, when are these discussions going to be held and who's going to be involved with them? The, we haven't even gotten an MOU yet from the state of uh, Kentucky. We've been waiting for several weeks on that. Mm -hmm. So we haven't even had a preliminary meeting with the state yet. Um, last time we, we kind of put together, if I recall, we, we put together a, a comprehensive group that looked at um, the Riverfront Commons study as a whole when we did the comprehensive plan right. of the study. Um, I don't think that group met for the first phase of design. The first phase of design was pretty straightforward. We knew where it was going to go. We knew only one place for to go. Um, so if you like, we can we can expand the group for the second phase of design. If you like. I think we need a lot of. I'd like to get my input on it as far as the Main Street Swale. I think for future development. Uh, I know that when we had the pier project a couple of years ago, and they gave a presentation, there was a whole pier and Berry Street and everything. Whether or not we build it now, I think we need to take those elements into consideration in this part of the design because it is that area that's involved with it. Well, I think, uh, I mean, you, you understand that the funding isn't there to do anything but the trail at this point. I mean, we can talk about other aesthetics that go there, but the money isn't there for those things. We would only be able to, in theory, get some level of design. Yeah, but I don't want to put a trail in and then have to tear it out later in that section. I think no, I understand, but they're not, what I'm trying to say is, even if we have these grand ideas, they're not going to be able to design before that. Understood. This okay. is just for the trail. Yeah, but I'm saying these elements of the trail should take those uh, hopes and wishes sure. into consideration to, for down the road. Right. Any other comments? <laughs> We've had a motion and a second for 20193R. Can we get a roll call, please, Tom? Member Cornett? Yes. Member Burns? Aye. Member Lynn? Aye. Member Walter? Aye. Member Gary? Aye. Member Basin? Aye. You guys have it? We'll move on to order number 2019, number 4R, accepting the audit for year ending June 30th, 2018. City of Dayton, Kentucky, municipal order number 2019, 4R. The municipal order accepting the completed audit for the year ending June 30th, 2018, and authorizing reporting and publication in accordance with KRS 91A.040. Been read. We have a, a motion to accept that order number 2019 4R. I'll make that motion. I'll second. 
motion by, made by Member Neary and seconded by Member Bazer. Any comments? I just want to make one comment there. Yes, sir. The audit was fantastic, but I, I attribute that to the fantastic work the staff does down in, in the office. So I compliment the staff once again, but the audit was fantastic for the city. Any other comments? Donna may please have a roll call. Member Burns? Aye. Member Lynn? Aye. Member Boulder? Aye. Member Gary? Aye. Member Basler? Aye. Member Fournette? Aye. Ayes have it. Moving along to order number 20195R, the Recreational Trails Program with Grant Funds. City of Dayton, Kentucky, Resolution Number 2019-5R, a resolution by the City of Dayton, Kentucky to support application by the City for the 2019 Recreational Trails Program grant funds. Do I have a motion to accept number 20195R? We have a full explanation on what this is first, so. Donna? Yes. The City intends to submit an application for the 2019 Recreational Trails Program grant from the Department of Local Government for funding up to 80 percent of the proposed project costs in developing a recreational trail. And the city will match with a 20 percent. And I think if we need any more further explanation, Bob will give that. This is excuse me, Bob Gooder. Uh, this is just basically a recent bill that the grant we put in last year for work on the recreational trails at Southern Park. Uh, most of the funds that we we'll be using here to address the disease and dead ash trees. Uh, and so that's the majority of the funds we're doing there and doing some, and some money for grooming and preparing the trails. So probably the biggest concern and probably the biggest expense is the uh, efforts to go in there and take out the, take out the disease and dead ash trees. It's up there Saturday. Um, there's not a lot of healthy trees left up there. The hillside is mainly off, is mainly all ash, and the emerald ash floor has devastated. So, um, well, my question is, what we're we're committing to match 20 percent mm -hmm. of the 80 percent of the grant, mm -hmm. but I don't see any. Uh, all I see is proposed project costs. I don't see what the pro those costs are. Okay. I'm, this is just a resolution. I'm sorry, that's what the proposed project cost would be. Would be to uh, take down. I've got quotes for about uh, eighty thousand dollars to take out the ash trees. Uh, so and put in, in work on the trail. So I'm sorry, I didn't include the. Uh, and just the dollar amount on that. Uh, eight thousand dollars. Which twenty percent of eighty thousand. So we would match. Twenty thousand dollars, and yeah. we're going to put an eight. Yeah, okay. okay. That's that's. So it's a hundred thousand dollars. Twenty off. They would provide us with eight. I'm sorry. Understood. Would that twenty come out of the thirty that we have set aside for that park? It could, or it could come out, um, you know, of other funds. It depends on that. So. Well, yes, in that sir. case, uh, since I saw some of the work that's already started in Sergeant Park, thank you. Um, and I saw all the dead trees that are up there, and quite frankly, they are dangerous. We couldn't open up that park. Uh, I'd like to make the motion to accept resolution number 2019-5R. I'll second it. The motion made by Member Neary and second by Member Basler for 20195-R. Any comments? Tom, may I have a roll call, please? Member Lynn? Aye. Member Bolter? Aye. Member Neary? Aye. Aye. Member Basler? Aye. Member Fournette? Aye. Member Burke? Aye. 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 Now we'll move on to the second reading of uh, previous uh, readings. Number 20195, abolish the tree board. City of Dayton, Kentucky, ordinance number 2019, number 5, an ordinance abolishing chapter 98 of the City of Dayton Code of Ordinances, which establishes the tree board to regulate trees within the city. Okay, a motion for 2019 number five. 
move to accept 2019 number five. Moved by Walter. Second. Second by Ms. Cornett. Any comments? This is sad. Why do we have to abolish the treat board just because we can't populate it? There's, I've been coming to these meetings for 12 years and I, I thought I knew most of what was going on in the city and I never knew there was a treat board. When's the last time the treat board met? There is a treat board. Sure it's not a tree. Tree. Yeah, they've never. Lisa Bass. The board has never met, and it's not not active, and it never has been active. I see no reason to keep it on goals. What was the goal of the tree board? I believe at one time, and correct me if I'm wrong, is to uh, retain a grant. That's correct. So, however many years ago they put together a tree board to, to give a, a tree grant, and that grant is no longer available, so. I just didn't know. I know we're lacking on enough volunteers to fill all the boards and all the volunteer projects in the city. I just think it's sad that we're doing this with Earth Day being next next Monday and Arbor Day, Tree Day being next Friday. I we have a park board. I think there's trees in the park that could be in the park. Well, the, I, I believe the intention of the ordinance was trees around the city, whether it be street trees private property trees to give some advice on how they could maintain those trees. It's not like we can't reenact it at some point in time and we ever get a grant, but well, I'm, not, I'm asking towards that again. I understand. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I'm asking why take it off the books if we've never even tried? I think the last time, if I'm not mistaken, that board was put in when uh, Bobby Critton was mayor. Because his daughter was on it. Mm -hmm. And I think they just did a one-time shot when we had trees and they planted them through town. That's the only thing they ever did. Wasn't it for the trees on the avenue? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was for. So how long ago was that? Quite a long time. We're still advocating for trees. We haven't lost our love for trees. I mean, we're, we're going to put trees in on a sidewalk project that we're doing along. The avenue and Scott Wright, the, the, the tree board can always can get involved. We got the extension office that can still give advice on trees. We have our guests on staff that will qualify for this. Quite frankly, if someone's putting a tree on private property, uh, there's there's nothing the city can do in regards to that. And if someone needs advice, they just need to call the city. That's all. In terms of the tree, because the biggest problem we have with trees is they fall from one property to the next, and everybody thinks. Uh, they're entitled to compensation from the property owner when in reality they're not. So uh, that's the biggest problem I know of. But if the committee hasn't met in 25 years or whatever, I just I don't see a reason to keep it on the books. It's, I mean, it's just like, you know, we used to have an ordinance where if they tied up a horse in front of your establishment, <laughs> you had to feed it oats. I just don't see the reason to keep that. I see what other cities are doing with their tree boards. Some pretty nice projects. And so if, we do, if there's no if there's no citizen demand for it, here we are. Bob, have you noticed any uh, tree board qualifications for grants you've applied for that they there's a line? Um, not really. The major tree grants are the Campbell County Soil Conservation uh, <laughs> grant that you can use for trees. Um, and there's also an urban forestry grant through the extension office and neither one of those uh, require it. Let me say that we are blessed in Campbell County to have DJ Scully, our county extension agent, uh, who is a, has a degree in forestry and uh, you know so when we have any issues with trees I almost always defer to him and when we plant trees I always run them by him and discuss what are the best trees for an urban environment. So um, I, can, I can understand uh, Councilman Neary's concerns, uh, but we have the resources we need uh, to move forward and to plant trees, and we have access to uh, funding to, to acquire trees. And if we needed to do a tree board at one time, and there was demand and interest in it, I think we could start it up again. Motion 
Any other comments? Motion made by Member Volter and second by Member Burnett. Donna, can I get a roll call, please? Member Volter? Aye. Member Neary? No. Member Basler? No. Member Cornette? Aye. Member Burns? Aye. Member Lynn? Aye. The ayes have it. Four two. <coughs> Moving along to number 2019, number six, to update the City of Dayton Code of Ordinances relating to sewers. City of Dayton, Kentucky, Ordinance Number 2019, Number 6, an ordinance amending Chapter 51 Sewers of the City of Dayton Code of Ordinance. This ordinance amends Chapter 51 of the City of Dayton Code of Ordinance relating to sewers to update the ordinance to comply with the City's interlocal agreement with the Sanitation District Number 1, who has taken all operational and supervisory responsibilities with the City's stormwater and sewer systems. These revisions, including redacting provisions of statutes related to fees, rates, and violations, and process proceeds the to obtain the necessary permits. This is the second reading. We have a motion to accept number 2019, number 6, for the update of the City of Dayton Code of Ordinances related to sewers. I'll make a motion. We approve 2019, number 6. Motion made by Member Lynn. 6. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Motion made by uh, Mr. Lynn, sixth by Member Burns. Said he was awake. Any comments? <laughs> no comments? Ms. Donna, can we have a roll call, please? Member Neary? Aye. Member Basler? Aye. Member Cornette? Aye. Member Burns? Aye. Member Lynn? Aye. Member Volter? Aye. The ayes have it. Moving along to uh, number 2019, number 7, amending the civil fine schedule for violations for garbage. City of Dayton, Kentucky, ordinance number 2019, number 7, an ordinance amending the civil fine schedule for violations of the City of Dayton Code of Ordinance, Chapter 50, garbage. Do I have any uh, motion to accept number 2019, number 7, to amend the civil fine schedule for violations of garbage? I'm sorry. Do I have any comments? Yes. Yes, sir. Bill, was it 250? It was 250 for a first offense, 500 for a second offense, and 1,000 for a third offense. It followed the fine schedule for the rest of them, and the recommendation was to amend that $250 for each infraction, so it wasn't such a burden on on people. Because when you have a garbage situation, they don't get a violation first, based on the ordinance. When the infraction occurs, they're issued a citation. Would this $50 fine also include people that empty an entire building and set it on the curb, or is that something different? That would include that, yes. That's the part that uh, has me concerned. I, I think we need all the leverage we can get. I, you know, it's a ball of garbage cans, I'm all right with it, but we get these people that sit out monumentous amounts of <coughs> garbage and furniture and everything else and that's only a $50 fine. Is that right? Based that's on correct. this. Are they <coughs> for an exception if they've called um, and made arrangements? Well they wouldn't call us. They would actually right. they would actually call um, uh, people who pick up Republic. who pick up the public correct who pick up the trash and they would make arrangements with them. It doesn't matter what they put out. If, if Republic will pick it up and take it, that's fine. Other than that, the requirements are for a large item. There's one large item per pickup. If, if they've not requested in advance an agreement to pick up. I just wonder how everybody else feels about the, uh, the huge dumps on the curbs. Phil, my question is one of what uh, Jeff says. If they do not call Republic to have it picked up, and Republic doesn't pick it up, are they are they going to get a fifty dollar fine or what? Most of the time, this is just talking. This is usually landlords. It's not usually a homeowner who's putting this large dump out, and 
it's not happening as frequently because I have been issuing citations and if I'm able to get a hold of them I make contact with them immediately after we find out and a lot of times it's usually picked up if not by Republic by the homeowner or their their representatives by the end of that day so I mean it's not really that we want their money whether it be 50 or 250 we don't want them to do it and, and I mean if uh, if they leave it out there and we issue them a citation for fifty dollars and it's not picked up in a day or so by them they're still going to have the fifty dollar fine in addition to having to pick up the stuff if our if our public works ends up picking it up then there'll be there'll be additional cost in addition to the fifty and I mean the reason I lowered it is we're just not looking to gouge people we don't want their money but if someone who continuously violates the ordinance for garbage whether it be in that circumstance a, a set out or whether they're putting a large load out of just even if they just put a large load out of trash bags it can create a bigger mess than if people put out two mattresses unwrapped and, and three cushions when you put out trash bags and you don't have it in a container especially with the weather getting warm like it is now you have more rodents you have more dogs running freely and and that's the issue that we're trying to to keep from happening so this allows us if you do it two or three weeks in a row you can end up with three fifty dollar citations where before I was going to be issuing them a two hundred fifty dollar citation a five hundred dollar citation and a thousand dollar citation and, and I mean like I said we don't really want to hurt our citizens we want them whether they they own the property or whether they're the landlord we, want, we just want them to get the message and I think once they get the first citation they're going to get the message and it's going to stop so Phil explained to me uh, whenever we were working on this is the problem the problem that occurs with the trash is <coughs> you have an opportunity to warn them and say hey correct this problem because the trash is picked up so quick sure. a lot of times this is you know just move to the citation and move along Part of the process. Phil, one, one more question, and I agree. I agree with what you're saying, I, and I don't want people to pay $250 if, if, uh, for a small type of thing. Once we get, give a citation for this, let's say there's a large dump when we give a citation, how long before our public works people will pick that up after that citation is received? I, I would say probably two days. Okay. And then we would charge them. For and then we'll charge them for the for the labor and the. Uh, pickup truck to, to <coughs> and, trash. Okay. and or if a uh, run gear who uh, uh, comes and picks it up they still want to get a $50 fine correct well I, I'm not going to issue that until after trash trash day. I'm not going to issue that on Wednesday making the assumption that Republic is not going to pick it up if I get a complaint on it I'll go there Thursday after trash been picked up it's still mm -hmm. there then I'm going to issue them a citation I'll take pictures of it and everything will be on file and it'll be done. So roughly two days. Yes, sir. Any other comments? I say if the code enforcement officer recommends this, it's his job. He's the one taking the heat on it. The idea is not revenue, it's getting people to comply with the ordinance. I respect his professional opinion on this one. And we can always come back and revisit and change it if it's not effective or if we see problems with uh, landlords or anybody putting out a big dump of, we'll take your recommendation then on how to stop those things. With that in mind, Joe, would you like to make a motion to amend uh, 20197? Oh, I thought the motion was made. I, oh, I'm sorry. I'll make a comment to start coming, so. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll make the motion to accept 2019 number seven. Motion made by Member Neary. Do I have a second? Second. Please, first. So, um, <laughs> second by Ms. Bordet. Uh, can I get a roll call, please, Donna? Member Basler? Aye. Member Cornette? Aye. Member Burns? Aye. Member Lynn? Aye. Member Volter? Aye. Member Neary? Aye. You guys have a unanimous lead. I'll move on to the portion of the council where we will be doing the first reading of the next ordinances. 
First one would be 2019, number 8, amending the 2018-2019 budget. <coughs> City of Dane, Kentucky, Ordinance Number 2019, Number 8, in order to amending the adopted City of Dane, Kentucky annual budget for fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019, in estimating revenues and resources and appropriating funds for the city to the fullest extent authorized by KRS 82.082. That's first reading. Moving along to first reading for 2019 number 9, accepting the bid of MCI Metro for a 20-year franchise. City of Dayton, Kentucky, ordinance number 2019 number 9, in order submitting the bid for MCI Metro for a 20-year non-exclusive franchise for the use of the public streets, alleys, and other public grounds of the city for the transmission and distribution of communication services through and for the consumption within the city. Moving along to the first reading for 2019 number 10, correcting a scrivener's error in the city, city zoning ordinance sections. City of Dayton, Kentucky, ordinance number 2019 number 10, an ordinance correcting a scrivener's error in the city zoning ordinance section 10.15 and 10.17. And lastly, the first reading, number 2019, number 11, modifying and adopting the amended Manhattan Harbor Community Pattern Book. City of Dayton, Kentucky, ordinance number 2019, number 11, an ordinance modifying and adopting the amended Manhattan Harbor Community Pattern Book. Now to move along to the administrator's report, Mr. Giffen. Mayor, I've got a handicap parking request, 823 6th Avenue. The applicant meets all the requirements as set forth in the city ordinances. I'd like to ask for a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made by Ms. Cornett and second by Mr. Burns. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstains? Any nays? So it passes. I want to give a quick update on the banking bids. We received three bids um, from various banks around the region. And at this point, we are going to just kind of stay put. Uh, we have a very favorable interest rate uh, from bb and um, We are aware that bb and is merging uh, uh, with another firm. So at this point, because of the favorable interest rate, uh, which is more than double what we can get off of anybody else at this point, we're just going to kind of wait and see what happens. And then um, if the time comes later this summer or into the fall, uh, we'll uh, readdress the bids uh, if need be, and I'll, I'll take that to the finance committee if it comes up, and then to the council. And I just want to kind of update everybody on where that was. It had been a couple months uh, since we talked about it. Uh, the last thing I have is I'd like to ask for uh, expenditures of a few uh, uh, road uh, repair and sidewalk repair items that we took out of just the general fund that I'd like to ask that uh, we use municipal aid funds for. Most, all of this work actually was the work that we just recently did up on, on 7th uh, with the curb work and the, the new catch basins uh, and grates. Um, the total cost, uh, including two invoices that have not been received yet is $2,475.05. So I'd like to, I'd like, would like to ask for a motion uh, to use uh, municipal aid funds to cover those expenses. $2,475.05. This comes out of municipal aid? It would, yeah. Make that motion that we approve the cheese grater expense. <laughs> motion made by uh, Joe Cheese Grater Neary. Uh, <laughs> they work. It is. Uh, for the uh, municipal aid expense approval. Second. I'll give, I'll give the chat on this one. Uh, second made by a member of Walter. Uh, all in favor? Can uh, I make a comment for it? Oh, of course, Mr. Uh, Michael, I'm assuming this is up upper end of Center Street? Yes. Where you used the blacktop? Yeah, there was a blacktop piece as well. If this remedies the situation, and I'm not saying it will or it won't, that has to be a more permanent fixture than blacktop, because that blacktop will break within six months. Are you talking about the blacktop? Curve, yes. Like yes. And I, I don't have a problem with putting blacktop down if it's going to remedy the situation. 
Yeah, if it works, we'll just continue to monitor and repair it. I feel like putting in a permanent curb there may not be the best thing to do unless it ultimately is needed to, do, to fix the storm on top, only because I, I'm, I'm sure emergency vehicles could still get over it, but I don't know if they would, I'm sure they would rather run over a black top and round curb than a comfort curb. The problem is, if anybody runs over that black top right now, it's going to break it. It's going to break it. And it's going to break with what? It's, as soon as winter comes, it's going to break. Well, yeah. And I don't have a problem with putting on a temporary fix, a patch. And if it works, it works. If it, and if it works, we ought to put a, a permanent fixture up there. Right. Okay. Your comments by Ms. Burns. Anybody else? Comments? Okay. That's all I have. I'll say if I have any questions. Well, we need to. Yeah. We need to approve. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? I got one question there, Michael. Uh, <coughs> what about the work Bluegrass did last year? Are they coming back anytime soon? Yeah, they wanted to come back a few weeks ago. We told them that we wanted to wait until the ground was a little uh, less moist. So uh, I don't have a specific date, but it should be coming up. <coughs> I know they've met on. I knew they. I know they've re-met with Rick and, and the guys down there at Harbor on what they need to do. So. So I believe the eyes have it. Fantastic. And that's all I have unless anybody has anything else for me. Okay, so moving along. Uh, to the uh, city attorney's report, Mr. Edge. Nothing to report. We'll move along to the department head's report. Uh, we'll go to uh, uh, Fire Chief, Mr. Atkins. Thank you, Mayor. We all received my monthly report. I don't have a whole lot to add to it. Um, we did do our project prom thing of building schools last weekend. We had custom cars, but just kind of talked to them about distracted drunk driving. Um, we do have a fire board meeting tomorrow night at six o'clock at the Bellevue City Building. Um, beyond that, I don't have a whole lot to add. That's Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very sir. much. Uh, Police Chief, uh, Mr. Hatfield. Uh, Y'all have my that. Thank you, sir. Economic development report from Mr. Yoder. Yes. I do apologize. I printed off this report, stapled it, and collated it, and left it on my desk. <laughs> I will email it out to you, but we'll just go over the other good things. Uh, starting off with the Main Street Group, we're progressing with plans for a date fleet. Uh, a monthly uh, flea market at the parking lot in 600 block of 6th Avenue. I should have a more to announce on that at the May Council meeting. Uh, the main street group also be taking over the taste of Dayton in the fall. So that's good. And our next main street meeting will be Tuesday, April 30th at 7 p.m. at the old YMCA building. Uh, CCAP, I'll be sending you a report of the expenditures we have the end of March and that quarterly. Uh, everything's pretty standard. Let me just say this has been our most successful uh, uh, year to date. Um, two major projects done. Uh, one Avenue Pharmacy where we had the ribbon cutting last month. Uh, it was great. We turned Smitty's into a great pharmacy and a great asset to the community. Uh, 626 Avenue. Uh, if not done, just going through the final punch list. Uh, Miller's building. Uh, the apartment, I know he's one of the apartments is rented. I've taken a walk through there. It's marvelous. And he's working on getting a tenant in there. So hopefully we'll have an announcement on that too. Some of the grants. This is, it's got to be a very busy grant season this spring. First thing I want to announce, uh, there were some tap grants uh, that were uh, given out earlier this month uh, from the calendar year 2017, this is 18 months ago. Uh, some of you weren't on council back then, but some of you in 18 months, I forgot what we did. But uh, we did get a letter um, announcing that we uh, received our 2017 cap request for the amount from the state for $123,594. And this is the Dayton Kentucky 8 Tank Route Improvement Project. Putting um, 
I had to turn around, I had to get a Clark Street, we'll put in a concrete pad there and a flash shelter there for those who use the bus service to go to work in the industrial park. Uh, following it, we'll be putting in a lot more benches, trash cans, uh, and six at O'Fallon and six in clay, we'll be putting in butt receptacles for cigarettes because that's a problem around there. Um, benches on the street and also money in there to put six more lights along six out. So that will get oh and Sheros along um, six out, which is already been approved by KYTC. So some benches, bike racks, uh, bus shelters, this is done in conjunction with tank. I think we're really gonna be upgrading our service to those who take public transportation. It's gonna be a nice Project. Uh, we're still working on the 6th Avenue TAP and Dave Pike SMGS project. I am still waiting on uh, approval of our uh, right away plan from the state. And I call weekly and see what that's at. So that's that's at. There has been a quick call for a calendar year 2009 TAP grant for cities under 20,000. Uh, in May 4th, we are working on my phone. I looked at what we had available. One project that we have, the city of Fort Thomas, is coming down North Fort Thomas Ave and they fight the sidewalk um, to about Northridge Lane. That's where the, the city walks the city line is. And our project goes up to Chateau Lake and down there. So we're going to put in funding to see if we can. Um, get funding to fill the gap between Chateau Ridge and uh, North Ridge Lane. So, can I make a request there? Uh, yeah. My, my understanding is that we can't start any of this project until the right of way yes. has been cleared. Is that correct? Yes, Even off city property. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes, it is correct. So, if we uh, do another request to extend that, mm -hmm. Will that include that as well, or is that a separate issue? That will be a separate issue. That will be one. As I've looked at it, there are two parcels of property which would have right of way issues. So that would not impact us starting no. out coming up from the other end. We'll go through the same process and we'll wait six months for the yeah. same. Yeah, because, because, you know, it'd be nice to get that sidewalk in before school starts last year. I, I, I know you're trying. I know. I know. I, I wouldn't want to do anything that's going to impede. That's what yeah, I said. This is a completely separate, isolated thing. I want to do its own. Uh, can I be honest? In 2017, uh, it took until 2019 to get awarded. So we have to have a long-term vision when we do these things. Um, and I apologize. There's nothing, there's nothing I can do. I understand. You know, and that's my answer. That um, I. Trust me, I reach out to our state senators and representatives about these problems and they're aware of it. And Can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm in sales and I'll tell you what, if you just leave voicemails for somebody and don't yeah. aggressively follow up. Trust me. Um, may I suggest that you send an email to these parties that you're trying to get a hold of and have their approval? And copy everybody on council mm -hmm. and the mayor. That'd be fun. And I would gladly forward that to everybody that I know in Frankfurt mm -hmm. saying, can you please go over there and wake them up? Because we've been waiting a long time for these projects. This is, is the bump out project part of yes. the date the it's all tied together. It's all tied together. And we can't start any section of it no. until KYTC approves it. Right. No, we can't start right away. We can't even start the right-of-way process until we get approval for right-of-way. We can't start construction until the right-of-way is complete. And that's what's been holding us up for... We're, we're waiting on to get approval to go into the right-of-way portion of it. And that, that approval has to be given by KYTC. Yes. All right. And that's what we're waiting on. And once we get that, we can start with construction because we've got no, all the land. No, no, we have to go through right the right right way process. Which, we're waiting on to... We which can't can start right-of-way process in, in a year. until we get approval to move into that phase. Okay, the right-of-way process that you're talking about, I'm presuming, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. is for the properties further up on Dayton Pike. Yes. Okay, not on 6th Avenue, no. not from 7th Avenue up to Belmont. No. 
it's from Belmont to Chateau Drive because of the way the property lines are. Why can't we start the other sections? The rules, the rules, that's what I just said. They, you know, that, that's frustrating. You can't start that project on property that we own. So what's the time frame <coughs> on the, I know we're waiting on an answer, but if we get that answer, what's the time frame? We've got the company hired, ready to go to do the right way process. It's probably a three, four month process. Yeah, we are all ready to go. We have contract and everything, all signed, everything lined up. We know what parcels have the full plan together. We are just waiting on the approval to go. Well, uh, I think that an email, a group email, and then have any follow up. Mm -hmm. uh, that way it's a matter of record too, not just I left the voicemail. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just very frustrated by it because this project seemed to come to light probably, what, seven or years ago? Yeah. And we still, and with Pedestrian Safety Month, I see where these bump outs, especially on 6th Avenue, if we could just do them. Oh, trust me, we would, we would love to be there. No, I, I was got two years ago when I started the lawn of that. Uh, Michael gave this to me and said, get it going, and I have played every card I have to get things moving forward. And uh, it, I don't know, I, I, am, I, I am waiting on the state. It's, it's just, I mean, it's the same with Little Rock Commons, the design phase. We're waiting for six weeks just for an MOU. It's, yeah, I, I'm, like I said, I just get frustrated by the delays and uh, hey, we're, we're waiting on somebody else. If I can help kick right. it's fine. I, I understand. I'll let the lab to do that. All right. Thank Anything you. we can do. Um, so that's there. Uh, also open right now are calendar year uh, grants for recreational trails and one of conservation fund. Um, each one of these grants is a different thing. I'm going to use both of them uh, for Starkson Park, for Land Water Conservation Fund. There's some improvements we need to do um, to the restrooms and to put a water fountain in there and some things like that and that's well suited for the land and water conservation fund that's due uh, at the end of may so it will it will come up uh, we have to have a public hearing it will come up at our uh, in may at our meeting in may so we'll do that uh, one other little grant that i'm working on uh, a chrome rubber grant uh, generally was used for chrome rubber mulch but they have a new product now benches and picnic tables. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting in for some benches and picnic tables. Uh, we get 75% off the cost of this, including shipping. Um, so I mean, it's six benches and four tables. Um, so we're gonna use those at Clark Street Park and at Jamestown Park. So that's going through there. So these some of the grants that we're working on right now. Uh, we'll see what we get. Uh, one to mention the bar, we did not have a Bar meeting this month. Board of Architecture Review, I'm sorry. I just said bar. Um, <laughs> no, we do have it at box. Um, um, but I want to talk about the Board of Architecture Review. I hope you have been following the Dayton Community News. Uh, the board members are writing articles. Margo's doing one on Passive Heat, Passive Cooling yeah, passive next cooling. month. And we're doing one on Italian uh, articles the following month. There will be a meeting in May. Uh, we have some uh, things going on in the agenda, and that'll be May 14th at 7 p.m. at Puck's Barbecue. So always welcome to come join us, and if you want to have uh, some barbecue while you're doing that, you know, <coughs> so that is all I have. Any questions? When's your next Main Street meeting? Main Street meeting is April 30th at 7 p.m. All right. Anybody else? Thank you very much, sir. Actually, I have something for Mr. Yoder. A couple back. months ago, I'm sorry. You were so close to me. I'm just so close to me. Go ahead. Sorry. Like I said, it's Pedestrian Safety Month, and I've been working with some of the people in Bellevue on it and putting articles out and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it could fall under unfinished business, but since you're still at the podium, a couple months ago, I asked the administration and yourself about getting some pricing on the uh, pedestrian crossing solar flashing lights that we see all around the area. Mm -hmm. um, I did some travel over the past month or two and it seems like they're coming up everywhere and they work. They get my attention when I'm driving. Have you had the chance? I have not. 
Could you? I could. At yes. least explore the costs that right. you could bring back to towns. Because if we're going to do these bump outs, especially on 6th Avenue, we need, we'll need to plan, can we put them on those corners? Like I said, they're very effective. I, I'm starting to see more and more of them so the price may be going down. But we don't know what the cost is. I will. Thank you. Anybody else, Joe? Anybody else? Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Lyles for code enforcement. I don't have my report. Uh, just a, a brief synopsis. For the letters, there were 60 letters issued for the uh, month of March, with 13 of them being citations and 47 being violations. For whatever the reasons were, there were 32 cases that were closed in the month of March. That's pretty much all I have. If anybody has any questions, concerns? questions but I would like to thank you for your reminder in the community news about um, just sprinkling up items. I know there was a lot of talk about it on Facebook and really none of it was new information. It was all something that's been on the books for years. Basically just, just reminders because of the weather getting warm especially with the trash. You put your trash out now. It's uh, the cold weather kind of preserves it until the garbage men pick it up but if with the heat and everything there's the animals are more likely to get in your trash if you don't have lids and, and we just want people to cut their grass that's pretty simple well, somebody said to me uh is it Elmer perry is that his name uh, yeah. Elmer, oh. yeah okay yeah, if he can get up every morning he's 80 years old and put his leg full up and down the yard up Good work, Phil. Thank you. I appreciate it. Move on to correspondence. Correspondence. And petitions. Can I just interrupt you for a second, Mayor? Yes, you may. One of the, one of the things I think uh, was elected last month, I don't think we should, because it's very important to the city is and it, it goes back to the audit the outstanding job donna does and she presents a, a report every month and i don't think we ought to forget that because this was what runs this city this budget so donna i don't have any questions on it because i always call you when, you when i do have questions but i want to thank you once again anybody else Move on to unfinished business. Mr. Mayor. I want to talk about the city building. Our boy. This has been hanging over the city for a decade. Especially the past two years. Last February, it came up to start the study. We delayed that until the summer, until we got the budget in and everything. And we spent $35,000 worth of taxpayers' money get that KCF do the project estimate uh, needs analysis etc and during that time there's a lot of misinformation and guesstimates and uh, divisiveness about the city building because not even council knew we got this the Friday after the election um, I think it's time to Let's put a timeline out there, okay? I said we have a public hearing in mid-May. If I could finish, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know there's other op options being explored, okay? Um, I get questions from people, and I don't know where they're coming from or what they've heard or who they've talked to. I'm hearing it really polarized one way or the other. And I don't know what I'm allowed to tell them and not tell them because as far as I know, council and administration is the only ones who've gotten this. Here's what I ask administration to do, and I apologize for dropping this on you without prior discussion. Can we put this report on the city website as soon as possible so that the public can see the numbers that we are given and that we're going to have to consider, uh, whether they be in PDF form or whatever? I, Tom, am I allowed to talk to people about this and share this information? 
Pasadena originally wouldn't be able to share the information on there now if they're looking for the records they need to do that with the city as an open record to classify any discussions you have about you know what's in that report I don't believe any of that is uh, of any kind of combination. I mean if somebody says they don't believe me can I show this to them? Yeah. No, no. Okay. They just don't duplicate copies right. of them out. If they want copies, they need to come to the city fill out numbers. Right, but if we put it on the city website, the city Facebook pages, the mystery's yeah. over. All right, we're not gonna have the misinformation going around. That, that'd be great, and I'd ask that be done as soon as possible. Um, and like I said, I know there's some other discussions and options going on. I would like administration to set a schedule with KZF for this presentation <laughs> to the public, similar to what we did with the uh, uh, the peer project. If you want to have it here or at the community center or YMCA, uh, where KZF can put on, can explain this, department heads can explain why they need that much growth. Citizens can at least get some questions, they can form their questions more informed. All right, because who knows who they're getting the answer from. I would rather have it public. They paid for this study and I think they need to see it. I would like to hold that Tuesday, May 21st. That's the third Tuesday of the month. It wouldn't be an official council meeting, I don't think. Uh, I don't think we need to make it that formal. I'd rather get these details out here. Um, I know that uh, there's misinformation about the TIF funds. And I hear, oh, the developers are going to pay for it, or if we don't spend the money, we're going to lose it. Well, I know you're working on the budget for next year, too, and there's a lot of challenges there. I'd like that in the June or July meeting, after we do this public presentation, that administration have an updated financial, because this is almost a year old now, um, if KZF can update us on the construction costs, if they've gone up at all for the estimate. That way, coming in the next fiscal year, July 1st, we've got that information. And we've all got feedback from our citizens who are going to have to pay for this for the next 20 or 30 years. And I think that may even change, I'm, I'm 75, 25 right now, but it may change my opinion. Um, I'm not calling for a timeline for a vote on this because I think it deserves, this is the biggest capital project the city's had since the flood wall, and I think it deserves uh, long and informed discussions. So if you would put this public knowledge on the city site, if we could schedule that meeting for the 14th so everybody could come in and see exactly, or the 21st, I'm sorry, May 21st, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but, but man, some of the questions lately are just really, I feel bad. Well, I'll be happy to do that. I'll reach out to KZF and make sure that they're clear on the 21st. I, I, I will say a problem for my end is that I need some direction on, on just where this topic is going as a whole because as I'm working on the budget uh, and as we go, the reason we canceled the KZF meeting in the first place was I didn't think, and I still don't think it's fair to KZF and the public to present KZF's report if we're still figuring out if there's a second option on the table. And I, if, we, if there is a second option, as I go through the budget, I need to know what to budget for. I mean, it's, I, granted, it's something we can come back and fix, but you know, I don't think it's fair to KZF to present in a public arena what half the public may be in favor of and half the public may be against. Uh, and the people that are against it are hopeful that there's another option. So I, I need some direction. I think the city needs some direction on where, you know, what happens if, if we have momentum on our second option a week before this meeting. And what, do, what do we do then? What, where is this going? We're probably not going to make any kind of a financial commitment vote until you'd have to do bond. Uh, I understand. I'm not, I'm not that could be November, December. I'm not saying that. I, I'm not saying that, that the 20. 22nd is the drop dead date we'll make decisions. <coughs> you know, we're working on, on, we put our focus into this for a year, and if we're going to present it, I think we need to present it as this is what's going to happen. Or if there's a viable second option on the table, it needs to be presented alongside that report so the public knows what it is. 
is at stake. If we if we have Kasia present for a new bill, but half the public is thinking, well, we're just going to wait and see what happens with the other thing. Where where do we go? How do I budget? I can't put together I can't put together a reasonable cost analysis for something else until I have that information, and we're not even close to having that information. But so there's a lot of unknowns on this. I don't know where this, we don't know where this thing is. And there may be a third option that comes up down the road. Or a third <coughs> option. I'm saying, and, but when the time comes and we have to decide go or no, I would rather have the citizens informed than us have the citizens' well, feedback. K K if KZF presents on the 22nd and we pursue something else for six months or 12 months, what we just presented is irrelevant. Well, this so, is just telling them what we already know, what they paid for. And we paid for it, so they should at least give a book report. No, I'll be happy to. <laughs> I'd be happy to put it on. I have no problem with that. But you have a, an need, issue with the KZF meeting. I think we need some direction on where this is going. If we're going to pursue a second option, let's pursue a second option. And let's compare the two things side by side. I don't think presenting something and then all in limbo on whether what we're doing with the second option is fair to KZF. What, it, it, KZF could come in and get, get reamed. Michael? Sorry. Let me do that. I know you're not looking at one meeting with the other option. Uh, well, one meeting. And this was back in February when I called for a meeting to happen and we heard nothing by March. Shortly after that meeting, you hear something, so we back off of that one meeting and then you go meet with the other party. Yet, you have not heard them come back for any offer or anything. And then the numbers that you were throwing out there to us on what would have to take place in order to consider this place as a, uh, another option, I, I, I feel that to me would be a total waste of taxpayer money because we we spent thirty five thousand for this report. The next report's going to be even more. We own this land. It's been sitting there for 10, 15 years as of where a city building is supposed to go, and we're just proceeding with it. Don't get me wrong, I, I agree with other options, but this one here is not, to me, is not paying it out because it will not get back to you. Neverland, with all due respect, we had meetings today discussing with, with, with folks on, on the cost projection of this project. That didn't cost a penny to the taxpayers. We have had multiple meetings with, with folks concerning this project over the last two months concerning is this a viable option, are, are all parties interested? I can't go into too much of that due to, due to the fact that it's a real estate deal. But the fact that it is it's not a true fact when you say there's only been one meeting and this is costing the taxpayers dollars because it, it hasn't. It's only been one meeting with the seller. There's been one meeting but we've had multiple discussions. One face-to-face. -face, okay. But there's been ongoing discussion. Well, I have to agree with Denny too. Is this even a viable option, as Michael said, because this property at 6th and Mary has been being groomed for 15 years. Total over those 15 years, we've spent $547,000 just to get it ready to build the show sort of And all of a sudden, some other option comes up. I'm not willing to spend another um, $50,000 on taxpayer money to get a report and one of these other things that you said we have to get done in order to it would be, less, it'd be less money than that, Ms. Crown. Even if it's 35000 It would be less money than that because the ma majority of the money that we've already spent on that $35,000 uh, conversation with KCF was spent on talking with our department heads, figuring out what kind of space we need. We already have the majority of that done. Right. It is plugging it into a different option is is a fraction of that cost. And there's other, there's other uh, reports that need to be done, though, before that even goes up for it, right? You're, well, I mean, that's, that's what I'm talking about. If, if, we, if we pursue a second option, there is going to be there is some there's things that we need to do. What those what those costs are, we we, we can debate those. And Ben and I had a meeting today uh, with with a group, and there could be another group that that can help negate those costs a little bit. But I, what, what I'm referring to is, if, if we want to pursue a second option, then there's there's going to be steps we need to go through. We're going to have to have some level of work done by an agency to to compare apples to apples. What we can get for that, maybe we can get you know a, a good deal worked out. And, um, and we've gotten a bid already, but we may be able to get a better deal. But we also have to do certain things before we would enter, even entertain buying a property and buying metals, appraisals, and things. I'm not saying that that money is monumental and the city shouldn't pay that. I think getting the information, you're going to have to pay for it one way or the other. I'm fine with getting the information, 
I just need to know, are we going down that path to want to get that information? Because it does, will cost some money, whether it's on the low end or the high end. I don't think it's it's fair to KZF or to the city to present something that that is immediately, or six months later, a year, going to be tossed out the window for to be compared to something else. This is what we pay KZF. Uh, this is what they do, and, share they that, and they go into meetings with proposals where they get eggs thrown at them. I'm not talking about something like that. I'm just talking about having the people be able to get in, more information about this. And there may be, a th if I hit the power wall and buy the rainy building and give it to the city, then you're going to be delaying. It's like getting saying squirrel. I'm saying, let's give the citizens the information that we've been asking for a public meeting. We've been asking for this for almost a year now. And let's just put it out there. And if other options, not only this one, but maybe another one come up or somebody comes up with a better idea, that's going to happen. We're nowhere near the decision stage on whether to go or no on this. I just want to get this information out there to the public. Well, we should fair, 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 fair enough, but on behalf of the, the employees and the people that work there every day, we need some direction on where this thing's going. Understood. It's already been delayed a year. We I'm need trying to move that along. You delayed it for six months. so And council unanimously approved that delay. We, I, I, you're, you're telling me what to do. I'm telling you we need some direction. Understood. But budgetary wise, this thing can't keep hanging over, so it's going to be unaffordable on, on, on all fronts. So we need to we need to make up our minds soon. That's what I'm asking for. Just some direction soon on where this thing is going. How much longer are we going to want to fiddle around with option one, option two, or both options? That's all I ask. Well, how, how much longer are we willing to fiddle around with option two? Wait for the for people to get back to us. They've gotten back to us. Uh, well, okay, then I would suggest this, that you put that in an email to us all, because I had no idea that you could meet with And that might play into a part of the, uh, the talk to get into. I mean, I'll tell you right now, straight up, I am not in favor of the second option. Okay, there's too much there to do when all that work has already been done. To go to option two. And Michael, if, if moving forward, as these meetings progress, if you could please include them in your, in your even if it's a your weekly update to the, to the council. Uh, weekly update to the council is on Facebook. Well, that the, you know, <laughs> property discussion should not. I mean, I'm not getting. I'm not getting. I mean, well, I'm he, not can, getting tell, he can tell me that. I'm not getting correspondence from. Many, I'm not what? I'm not getting correspondence from, from anything related to. Them. I'm the one that's sending the emails asking for updates, and I'm barely getting anything back. I did finally get one. Two weeks ago, that said they're working on appraisals. That's all. So there's your idea. I think council is the legislator, and we know that it's been going on for 15 years. We spent over a half a million dollars to get this property ready. We can make that decision when we want this to start. When when the option two goes away, that's a decision we as council make. And if you look back at the past, uh, what is it, 15 years, 16 years of council. Anything pertaining to the city building was always a unanimous vote, yes, made by the council. So we're going to take these last 16 years, the council and the mayor and administration, $547,000 and say, we don't care. That's not the line. point, I, I, if I may. It, let me get back to my original point, if I could. I, I know what your original question is, and I got to agree with Michael on this, uh, as far as why put KZF through this if it's going to be null void and we're going to go with option two. Well, we should be able to... I agree with them saying he needs direction from, from us for which direction we should go. We're talking about let's go direction one unless some other better option does come up. We don't know if it's going to. This is the only definitive thing we have right now. Right? And we've gone down this path, like everybody said, for the past 15 years. Never unanimous, always contentious, but we've always been going down this path. We have called for this public discussion and getting the public input, which may change people's votes because we've got very intelligent people in this town and they're gonna to have to pay for it and they're gonna have they're gonna be asking us some questions that we may not have thought of. And then I think we can keep proceeding down that road to doing any votes. As far as putting KZF on the spot, I don't think we're doing that. This is what they do professionally. 
and I don't mean to make it contentious, and it's not going to be a vote about whether or not to go forward. It's just going to get the citizens with the correct information that we already have. And they only have pieces of it depending on who they talk to. But technically, it's not going to be the correct information. It's not the full information, or we don't know if it's the full No, we're, we're presenting this option that, we, that they've paid for. Right. I think you should present, if there's going to be two options, you should present them at the same time. And what I'm asking is, are we going, what kind of timeline are we looking to go down on the second option? I'm perfectly happy to pursue a second option. What does that look like? I don't think it's been a bad time on Michael. Huh? I mean, you say a couple weeks. Well, this has been 10 years in the making. Uh, I, well, I, I, I think we're rushing to judgment here too quickly on, on all of this. I mean, I, I'm going to side with Joe on this a, a little bit in the sense that I see this as an informational meeting for our public, nothing more. It's a presentation of a study we had done to build a new city building on the 6th and Berry Street site. And this is what it will look like, possibly. These are the options, these are the costs, those kinds of things. The citizens will be able to see that, hopefully ahead of time, if we do what Joe's asked. They'll be able to give their input, ask questions. We're not going to make any kind of decision. If we have a section, a, a second option later, we should do a similar thing. If we have a third option later, we should do a similar thing. You know, I, I just think that it's an informational meeting. You know, if we're, if, if I don't see us rushing to make a vote on this thing right after this meeting. I think it's just information getting to the citizens, allowing the citizens to see what we know, what's been presented by KZF, and, you know, um, get their input and ask their questions. Um, that's just kind of the way I see it. I don't see it as pitting one option against another. Um, you know, it, it may take six more months. I don't know to get a second option viable, if there even is one. Uh, you know that yourself. but. I don't think, as Joe said, we don't need to rush to judgment and get this thing, you know, we're going to vote on this thing in July. So I just really see this more as, as informing our citizens as to what the study showed. We said, hey, we want to step, we voted, council voted to have a study done for a new city building there at 6th and Barrett, right? Okay. And, and we had that study done. They, they've given us several options. They've given us the cost, those kinds of things. And I think KZF will do a great job. They did a great job in the design of the building, as far as I'm concerned. But it's not about making a decision. It's about getting the information out to our citizens. You said it much better than I. Thank you, Jeff. I just want to make one comment. The further you push this down the road, that gentleman sitting right next to you, he has police officers sitting in his police station right now, sitting in unsafe, unsafe conditions. And I, I don't want to be a part of a policeman get, getting in uh, contact with something that, because he's sitting down in mold infested uh, rooms. Either either we do it or we don't do it. Well, and, we, the police we department, I, 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 the police department has been, we've had problems down that police department and we can't, keep putting this off. So to wrap it all up, what I would like to do, A, make this information public on the city website and on the city Facebook pages. That opens us all up to questions and may eliminate a lot of the misunderstandings of it's only going to cost us three or four million dollars. Um, or that we're going to lose the money if we don't spend it. Um, there, and now the financials are not that much in here as far as the TIF agreement. If we could at least get that information out now, I would like to have that public meeting. That we promised to them before we take any more steps. Uh, when this whole process started, that's what we told. That's what we said. That's what we agreed to. Uh, to have a public meeting similar to the peer meeting before we take the next steps going down the road, which could take months and months and months after that. If you were to hold a vote tonight, it would probably be 4-3 no. I'm not, that, I'm not trying to rush it. I need to, I want to hear from more citizens that have the right information and they may sway my no vote at this point. And again, I'm not looking to push a vote. 
I'm just looking to get this information out to citizens so when they ask me a question, I can cite the answer that we have. I, I get that. I'm, I'm fine with that. On an undirectly related note, I'm asking for some direction in coming here in the future. That's what I'm asking for. We don't know until option two or three phase comes. Well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. How, that's why I'm asking you directly. I need some direction. How long are we willing to pursue these options? Are we just going to sit on it for five years? I, I, I'm not asking for that answer, but I'm asking for that direction. Mm -hmm. I think we because are our facilities to. are inadequate. Understood. So what I'm asking for separately, I, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I'm, if I'm, <coughs> meeting, I'm fine with that. What I'm asking for separately is direction. That has to come from your boss. No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking council as a whole. We need some direction. Uh, I think we should always be until the day that we sit up here and vote to spend six point seven million dollars or whatever it is. Until that day. We should always be open to other options because it's not our money. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, but at some point, we I'm should some proceed. Point to make a decision. I'm asking for direction. You don't have to give me an answer now. What I'm telling you separately is, we need some direction. How long are we? How long are we going to just fiddle with this to the point where it's unattainable? Because that there is a timeline for that. I'm sure. Not until we vote to to approve it. There, there's a timeline when this is no longer attainable. If you want to kick this down the road, four, five, six years, ten years. That's what I'm asking for is, how long are we going to pursue these mythical options if they're options? I don't even know that we can afford option two. Or there three is, or four. is there an option two? That's what I'm, that's what I'm asking for directions on. Is, is where is this going in terms of the we're, options? We're going to explore an option two. I'll, I'll say that. We, we are exploring option two. How long are we willing to explore these options before we actually finally have a realistic decision on what's on the table? That's what I'm asking for. I would like to extend it past the point where we can see if we can actually afford any of this. And that will come in your next budget when you find out that actually, we don't have that Actually, we all already have that report. It was issued in November and it was sent out to the the next budget. It's still relevant. It was four months ago. I understand it's relevant, but as time moves on, you'll start to see that we don't have money to drop this much into a single project. Oh, really? Did you look at the budget every day? If you want to argue with me in front of all of these nice people about trying to give them the information that we paid for, go I, right ahead. I'm not arguing that. I'm not arguing that. Then let's just that. make a vote on it or something. I'm, this is I'm just asking for, for some direction. I, I, I'm on the road. road. Here, here's, if you're asking me for what I would advise, I presume, I would advise that we proceed with this first option that the citizens have paid for and take that next step that we need to take and that we promised them that we would take and have KZF or us if you're I mean KZF does this professionally and have this public discussion and have them look at it and ask us all questions and I don't think that are. is the next step that we have to take no matter which direction we go okay whether we hold out for option two and keep delaying it down the road or we come back in July and do a vote on signing a bond we still have to take this next step. And I don't think that we should say, you know, I always hear we're trying to get this done, but we're waiting for a grant that's going to take a year and a half. And to me, like I said, I'm in private industry. It's real frustrating. We've been asking for a public meeting with KCF on this, regardless of how many other options are out there. And I can think of two or three other possible options that, uh, but I, I think that's muddying the water. I understand where you're coming from, Michael, especially when it comes to budgetary. But I don't think KZF is going to be, they're professionals at this. You're, I'm not arguing your point. If, if you all want to have the meeting, I'm, I'm saying I'm fine with that. Okay. What I'm, what I'm saying is, there, there are, it doesn't have to do with the budget. This has to do with our employees. They're an inadequate. An inadequate and we're trying situation. to address and that. And all I'm saying is, I'm not saying, I'm not telling you right now for an answer. I'm just saying, I need some direction on where this is going. I think we need to discuss that. That's all I'm asking for. But, but do, do you I'm totally agree fine with, with at least holding this public meeting? I'm totally fine with having a public meeting. Okay. So do you have a, Mr. Mr. Lynn already made a motion two months ago to have this meeting, and it was canceled because we canceled the, uh, the, the council meeting. Oh, no, the option two was not even alive again. Yeah, exactly. And option two is not even an option for the I, 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 I would say, uh, the I would say, let's go with Joe's meeting. But we can still look at option two, but I would say there won't be an option three or a four or a five or six. We stop with option two. We can't keep going on and having 
Option two come up, spend money there, have another public meeting. Have an option three, spend money there, have another public meeting. We can't just keep spending money on these options. And, and, and I'm hoping for the best. By the time we get them to all the options, we get a public city. That's what I'm asking for. I mean, there's things I'd that say for other departments that we need to know what's going on. Is that a problem with you, Mayor? No, it's not a problem at all. Uh, except. I have no problem with that because the city administrator and myself have sat down and said there, there's not too many options within the city, within the, the, tiff, the, tiff, the definitions that they've been defined. And, and and that's where we're at. So I don't see there being six options. That's not something that, that Michael and I have discussed. But I agree that we should go forward with the meeting. Matter of fact, I'll make that a motion. We'll go forward with the meeting on May 21st to let KZF do the Dog and Pony show. And along with that, that we will not go any farther than two options for the city building. All right, so Member Lynn has made the option that on May 21st, 2019, KZF will have their uh, presentation, we'll call it, uh, for their, their proposal that they offered us last year. Uh, and it also added to that motion that there would be uh, one other option, but no other options beyond that. Is that you, correct, Mr. Lang? Absolutely. Can, can you clarify that? Because, what do you mean? well, when you say no more than two options, just because they're discussing something right now and it, and, and it becomes null and void, no, okay. all of a sudden another I would say, then I would say, the first option being Taylor, the second option is the one that they're in discussion with now. I can't name it, but. You can, I'm sure Tom can find some way to put that in there. Can we just separate your two motions and then see where we go from there? Like, have, vote up in this meeting and then we can vote on if you want to put stipulations. Tom, what's the best one? Split one. Do the, do the meeting as one motion and uh, make it a separate motion. Okay, so Member Lynn, is it my understanding that you'd like to make the motion that uh, Council is a public meeting on May 21st, 2019 to go over KZS presentation uh, of their city building proposal. Right. I'll second that since I started this. I was going to say, this is kind of cool. All right. <laughs> so, member has been named by uh, Mr. Lynn, second by Mr. Neary. Oh, don't go over there. <laughs> can, can, I, can I get a roll call, please, Donna? Yes. Member Cornett. Member Burns? Aye. Member Lynn? Aye. Member Boulder? Aye. Member Neary? Aye. Member Basin? Aye. The ayes unanimously have that meeting for okay. May 21st. Now I would like to make a motion that we are looking at the Barry Street site for a city building is option one. Option two being Option two. The, the one that you are in discussion with presently, and that we do not have any further options available for your city building. So, member Glenn has made a vague, <laughs> let's see, motion. No, it's not, it's not a vague motion. It's a motion of option one being Barry Street and 6th Avenue that we've had consideration over the last many years as option one, and option two being the option that the city is currently pursuing. And no further options will be made. Right. Is that correct, sir? Yeah. Second. Second by Member Burns. Donna, can I have, a, or do we have a discussion? Yeah, Donna? actually, I think that closing that door, I get a Powerball ticket. Okay. You know, you never know what's going to come down the road. We can always reverse this down the road, but I, I, I really, as far as limiting your options. Every time it comes up, we can decide whether or not to move forward or whether or not to wait. Uh, well, that's just it, Joe. We can go on like this for the next five, six years. And the thing we're really doing is wasting the time with people and money. And it's a, by, by that time, the city knows it costs three bucks. Three I understand. If we don't ever do this city building, I need to know that so we can try to do something else to improve the situation. Understood. Understood. So that's what I'm advocating for is some sort of direction on when this thing may come to And as, as the mayor said, so he doesn't really. believe that there's any other option available at this time in your mind and the city of Dayton for 
Sigler. Did you not say that? That has been our discussion. As far as real estate, see that that's where it gets hazy, Denny, is maybe option three is, is we have the building we're in with the money. I mean there's what is option three? Three half buildings been rehabbed, I can't tell you how many times, especially after the fire when they took the second floor off of it. Right. And uh, basically you can tell they're running out of room. I, I have an office in there too, sir. I understand. I, 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 just, I, mean, I, don't, I don't see where that's a five or option, but that's my thought. Motion's been made, seconded. Roll time. Uh, comments? Comments closed? Comments are closed. Uh, I think a roll call vote is done. Member Burns? Aye. Member Lynn? Aye. Member Volter? Nay. Member Neary? No. Member Basler? No. Member Cornett? Aye. It's aye. I need the mayor's day. Just because the word option is very vague, I'm going to say no. That's mm wrong. -hmm. <laughs> but I think we all have to be open minded, not only on this, but to our citizens. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they're going to be paying for this for all the time. Yes, both sides of the table. Absolutely, yes, ma'am. Thank you for thank you for getting this information out to the public. That we, my tongue is bleeding from biting it. Is there any? I have the first letter of unfinished business. I saw you had raised hand raised my eyes about unfinished business. Well, it's going to be about the city building. <laughs> Anybody else with some unfinished business? I have a question about the um, the task force for the water issues. Has anybody looked at the, the Tom Dunn's issue yet? Yes. And has there been a, any kind of solution? Well, I've been, I'm a, come up in the group meeting. I can't remember. I've looked at it. But it did come up. Yes, and we discussed it. And I believe. Uh, there, there was going to be a fix, wasn't there? And so there, from, from the, the field perspective, uh, the next time we had a heavy rain, Rick was going to do some dye testing yeah. um, as of last week. So that's and then uh, I plan on looking at a runoff situation up on 6th and Denham to get back with you all on that. Michael, if I recall on, I believe, Monday, we had a torrential downpour, and I left you a message. This would be a great, I, great time to check that uh, situation up on uh, Fairview. I don't think we're quick enough. For okay. Next okay. Just, just, just comment. I have one more item, sir, if I may. You may. Thank you. Uh, we have a lot more emphasis on our parks, uh, but we haven't had a park board meeting in a long time. Yes, sir. We're spending some money in Sargent Park, thankfully, finally. Uh, I think the park board needs to be very much involved in that. May I suggest that the May 6th park board meeting, which is the, month, the first Monday of the month, which is normally when park board is, that the park board meeting be held at the shelter at Sargent Park? Well, weather first, permitting. First of all, we've, we've held a park board meeting recently. Oh, I'm sorry, I was misinformed then. Uh, but for the May 6th meeting, for the next meeting coming up? I'll get with them and see what's short. Sure. It's a request. Joe. Yes, sir. Um, we're taking some trees down around the pavilion in the next couple weeks. Um, Why are you doing that? Because <laughs> the, the trees near the pavilion have to come down. So glad you responded to it. Thank you. Uh, understood. If they're if they're not down, I don't want anybody up there. Okay, understood. If they are down, though, I'd like to. Have no, that's fine. I, I'm fine with that. But I just wanted to throw that one caveat there. You know, it's gonna be a problem with uh, taking care of the board meetings and stuff like that. It could be an issue. So we've made a few board meetings at the back of the uh, box. Yeah. I just thought it would be a great idea to start exposing people to what's the potential of that park and since we're, it's now come into focus and it's now part of our park system. Thank you. That's all I got. Michael, I've had a question for you and the mayor. Can someone tell me why the flood wall gates are still up? Uh, I believe they were supposed to come out this week, Bill. Uh, Mr. Lucas said that uh, as of April 20th, I believe, of last year, the flood 
water just seemed to the point the April 5th? Now, I did. I looked at the last five years from March to May, and we we've only had one one peak at each point in, in, in time, and it's been in, it was in May. Oh, I'm sorry, in March. Okay. All three. I mean, all five years. I, I asked Mr. Lucas about that last week. It's been more of a staffing thing. Yeah, okay. I had somebody out on vacation last week, and it, it does take a lot of, it takes all hands on one of the it takes a long time. Are they really going to get down short? Okay. Yeah. Do any unfinished business? Anyone else? All right, we're closing that. Okay, any new business? Real quick, I, I should have mentioned in my report, uh, the first phase of Riverfront Commons is actually starting this week, construction on that is starting this week, about cruise construction, so uh, hopefully by the end of the summer we'll have the first phase of the trail open, it'll be from uh, the Queen City Riverboat site down to Basin Bill Fallon uh, to roughly the first SD1 uh, brick pit chamber, there'll be access, to be able to access it from both ends, uh, so you can park on Manhattan Boulevard at the brick pit and access it do a loop. Uh, so the first phase is currently under construction, so we're excited about that. Anyone else any new business? I have a personal note, sir. I'd like to thank the administration, the fellow council people, Mayor Baker, and the citizens uh, for the lovely flower arrangement that they sent to my mom's funeral. Uh, made me think a date while I was there, and when I came home, I felt really good about being around people who care. So thank you. We were thinking of anybody. I know there is a need for executive session, so I'll need a motion for us to go into executive session. Uh, ask the uh, council for a motion to go into executive session pursuant to KRS 61.810, discussions between a public agency and a representative of a business entity and discussions concerning a specific proposal. If open, discussions would jeopardize the city, retention, expansion, or upgrading of the business. And this is in related to uh, Potential financing and economic development for a property located at 11867. That's the motion. I believe someone made the motion already. I'll make the motion. Motion made, second. Motion made, second. I'd ask for a motion from council to, for me and Michael and city administration to proceed uh, based on the negotiations, draw up documents to bring back to council for approval. I'd like to make a motion to ask that uh, city attorney and city administrator and mayor proceed with negotiations to bring back legal documents to the council to finalize. The motion has been made by member Volter. Do I have a second? Second. Second is made by Mayor Berlin. Any comments? Donna, may I please have a roll call? Yes. On the third page. <laughs> okay. Member Lynn? Aye. Member Holter? Aye. That's fine. Member Neary? Aye. Member Basin? Yes, Aye. Member Cornett? Aye. Member Burns? No. Did I say it well enough? <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Motion to be. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.